Hey everyone, it's Mike here, and in this video, I'm going to be ranking all of the arcs of Dragon Ball Super that we've seen so far. Now, although the story of Dragon Ball Super is still continuing right now in the manga with the Granola arc, considering just how long the Moro arc lasted, chances are that this one might take a while. So instead of waiting potentially years to do this video, I'm just going to do it right now. And if I actually decide to read the Granola arc at some point, then maybe I'll go back and redo this video, or at least do an update. When pigs fly... <laughs> so with that being said, let's start off with what I consider to be the worst arc of Dragon Ball Super right now, which is the Potafu arc. Now this arc is considered by many people to be filler. However, Dragon Ball Super technically doesn't have any filler, considering that the anime is actually based on notes by Akira Toriyama, but whatever you consider this to be, I consider it to be pretty terrible. Featuring Goten Trunks stealing away on Monaka's ship as he channels Philip J. Fry from Futurama, and goes and delivers packages. Then they land on Planet Potafu and get involved in some superhuman water and some shady characters who are trying to find it. Flash forward to Vegeta once again having his body stolen and getting into an anticlimactic fight with Goku, which is almost certainly the worst one they've ever had in the franchise. Not only does this arc feel like a massive waste of time, but it also devalues characters like Gotenks by making him laughably weak compared to the base Saiyans, even in his Super Saiyan 3 form. Now, although the arc does set up time travel fuel, which is used later on in the story in the future Trunks arc, the fact of the matter is that this whole saga is totally skippable whenever you watch Dragon Ball Super. Next up on this list is the Resurrection F, or Golden Frieza arc of Dragon Ball Super. And honestly, I never liked Resurrection F. I've talked about it in my review of the movie when it first came out, and over the years on my channel, but I feel like it was a massive waste of potential and squandered so much of what was set up in Battle of Gods. In Instead of exploring the other universes and developing things in a real, interesting way, instead they cashed in on nostalgia by bringing back Frieza in a terrible story that was unbefitting of a great villain. Having him train for four months and totally invalidate the entire power scaling structure and all the training and struggles that our characters had been through since they defeated Frieza all the way back on Namek. And even the training and stuff that we saw in Battle of Gods, considering that Frieza was now more powerful than the brand new form of Super Saiyan Blue. And that form itself was also completely unnecessary and honestly just not a good form at all. Audiences didn't get enough time with Super Saiyan God in the first film, nor did we see the struggle of Goku reattaining it, let alone unlocking this brand new form. So the introduction of Super Saiyan Blue just felt like a massive cash grab. And the fact that they totally nerfed characters like Gohan and Piccolo, and made the Z fighters struggle to fight a thousand Frieza soldiers was kind of a slap in the face to all of them and everything that they had accomplished so far. And the fact that they ended by screwing over Vegeta is just another nail in the coffin to this story. And the Dragon Ball Super version had a chance to take that story and make it even better, but instead, they made it even worse, with terrible animation and stretching this movie out to fit an entire arc. The only good thing about it was Togoma, and they even found a way to screw that up by having him have his body stolen by Captain Ginyu, who just gets killed, and that's the end. What a waste of an arc, yet another one that you can completely skip. And talking about skippable arcs, let's talk about the first remake of a movie that Dragon Ball Super did, with the Battle of Gods arc. And just like Resurrection F, this is a worse version of the movie, with the movie being one of the best Dragon Ball Z movies, period. Bringing Toriyama back to a franchise that he had long been apart from, introducing a brand new power dynamic with God Key and the God Destruction Beerus, as well as the concept of the multiverse. But in the super version of this, they took everything that was good from the movie and basically stretched it out and made it even worse. What was once a great movie ended up being yet another mediocre and completely skippable arc. And just like with Resurrection F, the animation was a gigantic step down, especially episode 5, Never Forget. Fire! Even though the continuity is a bit different in the first two arcs compared to the movies, I would still say just completely skip over them, watch the movies, and then jump into the third arc of Universe 6. On the topic of wasted potential and something that was executed terribly, my next arc that I'm going to be talking about is the Future Trunks or Goku Black arc. Now this story had a lot going for it. It had the reintroduction of Future Trunks with another problem happening in his future. It had an interesting concept of a fallen god who takes over the body 
body of a mortal and tries to rid mortals from all of reality. And the animation and production design of the show had significantly increased from the first three arcs. And yet this arc still ended up being a massive disappointment. With bad pacing and a plot that falls apart because of so many plot holes being introduced over the course of the arc. As well as a really creepy subplot involving Mai and Trunks. But the worst part about this entire thing is the ending. Because the entire third arc of this story is the absolute worst in the entire franchise. With the ending totally destroying Future Trunks' character and his entire reason for existing. And nearly making me quit the entire franchise right there. Done! Even though there are parts that I do really enjoy about this arc, the fact that it ends the way it does really ends up making it into one of the worst things in the entire franchise, in the bottom half of Dragon Ball Super's arcs. Next up is the Time of Peace, or Ten Weeks of Peace, or whatever people like to call it arc, which takes place between the Goku Black arc and the Tournament of Power. And it's something else that people have considered filler, even though that isn't a thing in Super. And it's kind of ironic that this arc ends up being better than half of the other arcs of this story so far, giving us a bunch of fun and heartfelt stories that involve our characters living their lives, going about their day-to-day, -day, and getting into different hijinks. We see the return of Arale, who fights against Super Saiyan Blue Goku and even Beerus. We also see a story involving Gohan becoming the Great Saiyaman for a movie, and even Goku hiring Hit to kill him. But for everything that was fun and good, there were also some pretty lackluster and bad things along the way, such as Goku's most recent death being totally squandered. Something I talked about in this video where I talk about every time he died. Surprisingly, there's a lot of them. Either way, I'd much rather watch this arc than pretty much everything else I mentioned so far in this list, which really goes to show you just how bad those other ones were. Next up is the first arc proper that we got of Dragon Ball Super, which is the Universe 6 arc, featuring prominent fighters from Universe 7 encountering, for the first time, a bunch of warriors from another universe, and doing battle against them in a tournament for the fate of the Earth. Now overall, this isn't quite as heavy of an arc as many of the other ones in Dragon Ball Super, with the stakes being almost insignificant considering that it basically would just result in Universe 7 now being in a different universe. And it was all basically just an excuse for Beerus and Champa to fight one another, albeit through the proxy of this tournament. However, nonetheless, it still ended up being fun in the first good arc of Dragon Ball Super, which introduced us to a doppelganger of Frieza and a tale of Saiyan from Planet Sedan in Universe 6, a planet that we would see other characters from later in the story, and it's something that's captured fans' imagination ever since it was introduced. I'm sure that most fans are still waiting for Goku and Vegeta to visit the planet, although who knows if Toriyama even remembers that at this point. The best moment or fight of this arc is Goku vs. Hit, and even though it is basically just a cheap knockoff of Jotaro vs. Dio from JoJo's Bizarre Adventures Stardust Crusaders, the fact of the matter is it was still a cool moment to see Goku tap in to his Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken and fight against a character who can manipulate time. And Hit himself is probably one of the best characters that Dragon Ball Super introduced so far. So that's why I'd place it higher on this list than the others. Next up is the most recently concluded arc of the Moro arc, which happened in the Dragon Ball Super manga. And even though it hasn't had an anime adaptation yet, just based upon the story and what we saw in the manga, I would have to place it here for right now. There's a lot of really awesome stuff that happens throughout the course of the Moro arc with Moro himself being a really interesting villain with a cool design early on, of this ancient evil magical being kind of like Majin Buu, taking inspiration from demonic beings like Baphomet and comic book characters like Galactus, and going around the universe eating planets. But not only was he cool in concept, but he forced our characters to be more proactive and change the way that they fight using his own ability to drain their energy. This forced Goku and Vegeta to go off on their own separate training journeys to achieve their own new ultimate techniques, be it Mastered Ultra Instinct or Force Spirit Fission. And it even made the other Z Fighters train so that they could fight against Moro's henchmen. However, there is also a lot of bad in this arc, with the power scaling not making sense, tons of plot holes that happened along the way, especially at the end, and the entire ending itself falling off a cliff, and being one of the worst in the entire franchise for me. And even though it wasn't as
as bad as the Goku Black arc, the fact of the matter is that this ending was so bad and squandered so much of what was good that was set up throughout the arc that literally just made me give up on Dragon Ball Super and walk away from the manga altogether. The more I think about it, the more I dislike it, but I don't feel like doing the rest of this video over again, so I'm just gonna keep moving on with what I consider to be the second best arc of Dragon Ball Super so far, the Tournament of Power. Now, the Tournament of Power is kind of a mixed bag. On one hand, there's a lot of stuff that happens that makes no sense. The power scaling is pretty much at an all-time low in this arc, with the power of certain characters changing from episode to episode. And let's not even talk about mind-bogglingly dumb scenes like Krillin having a key clash with Super Saiyan Blue Goku and actually pushing back his blast temporarily. And then, of course, there's Kale and Khalifa. Because what did Dragon Ball Super need at this point but two overly obnoxious Mary Sue characters, with one of them being a literal ripoff of Broly? Ugh, I still have nightmares about the tingly back scene. But in terms of the Dragon Ball Super anime, this would definitely have to be the best arc for me. It had the best production, animation, music, the highest stakes, the best fights, and a lot of great moments along the way. Which is something that's often sustained Dragon Ball as a franchise. Because even if you go through long stretches of it being kind of weak, there will be some great moments along the way to keep you going. And that's kind of the tournament of power in a nutshell. There were some emotional moments, such as Champa being being erased along with Universe 6, and some awesome moments like Goku and Frieza teaming up with Android 17 to finish off Jiren. And the end itself set up a lot more to come in the future, with far more rivals and interesting characters who want to fight Goku again. And even though it was overly long and I feel like they could have structured it far better and probably could have done something more like the Dark Tournament from Yu Yu Hakusho with team battles instead of a clusterfuck of a battle royal, it still ended up being the best arc of the Dragon Ball Super anime so far. However, there is still one arc after this, which came out after the Dragon Ball Super anime, which I believe to be the best arc of Dragon Ball Super so far, and that is Dragon Ball Super Broly, which although it is a movie, is still technically an arc, and an event that's canon to the Dragon Ball Super anime and manga. And if you don't like me putting it here, well then talk to Harold. And Dragon Ball Super Broly for me is probably the closest that Dragon Ball Super has come to Dragon Ball Z in terms in terms of overall quality and epicness, taking a character like Broly, who I consider to be one of the worst villains in the franchise and someone I never even liked as a kid, and turning him into a more relatable, fleshed out character that I actually cared about and rooted for. Not only does this movie have some of the best animation in the entire franchise so far, but awesome music and of course action sequences, with the second half of this movie basically just being one long action sequence where Goku and Vegeta tag in and out against Broly as he continues to get more and more powerful, and then eventually them fusing together into Gogeta and defeating him in epic fashion, which is something that Gogeta tends to do, unless it's Dragon Ball GT. Now, there certainly are some problems with this arc, such as Frieza's motivation being that he wants to use the Dragon Balls to grow taller, which is just such an eye-rolling moment that was basically ripped off from the Red Ribbon Army arc with Commander Red wanting to use the Dragon Balls to grow taller, or the fact that somehow Broly in his base form was comparable to Goku and Vegeta's base forms, despite the fact that they had been through everything they had through Dragon Ball Super and before that, whereas Broly never was in a real fight before and basically just sparred with his dad. Or the fact that Broly went from that level to being far more powerful than Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta and fighting against a fusion in Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta, who still had to exert a good amount of power to finally put him down. But overall, I think that Dragon Ball Super Broly is by far the best Dragon Ball Super product that we've gotten so far, and worthy of being the number one on this list. Something I have a feeling is going to stay at number one for a long time to come, if it ever even leaves. With that being said, there is a chance that future arcs of this story could end up being even better. But I honestly don't have much hope after the Moro arc. Compared to Dragon Ball and Z, Dragon Ball Super has more arcs, but overall they have less quality. There will be great moments, concepts, and storylines that make you think that maybe an arc is going to be great, and maybe it'll live up to the original Dragon Ball manga. But time and time again, 
again, they let you down at the end, giving us some of the worst endings in the entire franchise, and constantly squandering the potential of the ideas it creates. So ultimately, I don't have much hope for the future of this story. So that's why instead of reviewing the ongoing story of the Dragon Ball Super manga, instead I'm just going to create my own story set in the Dragon Ball world. One that I think will address many of the issues I have with the current modern Dragon Ball, and tell a story more befitting of these iconic characters. So make sure to stay tuned for that. In the meantime, you can check out some more of my videos right here. Make sure to subscribe and enable all notifications, so you can stay up to date with all of my videos. Thanks for watching, and make sure to stick around, because there's a lot more to come in the future. Yeah, and you better subscribe!